Welcome to Ensuring High Quality IPTV Services, Part 2. Now I'd like to introduce the IPTV protocol stack because it's going to give us a good understanding of how IPTV gets delivered across the network. We start with the video server here at the top left. We're going to packetize that video or create what's called a PES or packetized elementary stream. We're going to put it into a transport stream which is made up of a 188 byte packets. Each one of these has a sync byte that tells us where the next packet is. It also has a continuity counter that allows us to reassemble these in the correct sequence. We're going to take those transport streams, we're going to run them over the UDP protocol, which we saw in the last presentation it is a, a low latency, but, uh, but a, a bit risky because we won't know about any drop packets. We're going to give it an IP address, and then finally we're going to send it over the network. At the other end, we're going to send it to the destination IP address. We're going to pull off that transport stream, put those transport streams back in order in a sequence, pull off the packetized elementary stream, feed it to a set-top box, and view it on the TV. So a good IPTV analyzer needs to be able to provide performance stats at all levels of this protocol stack in order to isolate a problem. If we take a look at that transport stream, I mentioned it's a 188-byte packet that's got our PES packets in it, our packetized elementary streams. And in each one of those transport streams, there is a sync byte that tells us where to find the transport stream. There's a program ID or a PID that tells us what it's carrying, like HBO or Showtime. And there's a continuity counter that tells us what the count is of this particular transport stream so we can put these back into a sequential order. So a good IPTV analyzer needs to detect if there are any errors to the sync byte, uh, the PID, the PID, I'm sorry, on the uh, CC, continuity counter, um, because these are critical. If we lose the sync byte, we can't find the transport stream. If we lose the PID byte, we won't be able to tell what this is carrying. If we lose the continuity counter, we won't be able to put these transport streams back together, and then the set-top box will not be able to decode the video. I also want to introduce the program clock reference, which is the method of sending a, a uh, synchronization signal to the distant end so that it stays phase lock with the transmitter. And the way this works, the transmitter is going to put a program clock reference, or PCR, uh, into that transport stream every 100 milliseconds. And it's going to go across the network, it's going to be received, and at the receive end, say the set-top box, is going to look for that PCR uh, it's going to take that value, that timestamp, it's going to compare it with its own, and that's how it's going to stay phase lock. If that 100 millisecond time varies too much, like 40 milliseconds, um, the receiving end is going to run out of buffer space looking for that PCR, our program clock reference. And we call this PCR jitter. The variability of arrival of that program clock reference relative to every 100 milliseconds is PCR jitter. If we get too much jitter, we'll, we won't be able to stay phase lock between these two systems. So a good IPTV analyzer needs to measure that PCR jitter. We also, in our transport stream, we have the PSI tables, the PAT tables, CAT tables, and I like to refer to these as the TV guide for your set-top box. Um, these tables define you know, where the program clock reference is, where the video and audio is, uh, the PID, so this would basically say, you know, here's the audio and video for ESPN, that type of thing. So a good IPTV analyzer needs to detect if there are any errors to the, uh, any of these tables, known as PAD or CAT uh, tables or PNT. We talked about the time to change channels. Uh, you know, typically a customer will allow you up to a half a second to change channels, and then they get a bit frustrated. So we need to be able to make sure that the, the set-top box and the combined with the DSLAM, that uh, protocol exchange, is able to work and change channels for the customer within a, a half second or less. We also need to know what the true customer's quality of experience is, and this is a fancy term that gets kicked around a lot, but basically what it means in this case is if the customer was sitting in front of the TV, how would he judge the quality? So good IPTV analyzer needs to provide a video preview uh, for that quality of experience uh, if, if the uh, 
TV and set-top box were hooked up and the customer was in front of it, how would he perceive that, that uh, the quality? And we need to have a MOS score, a number, so the technician knows exactly what the subscriber can expect if everything was all hooked up. If we look at the checkpoints that affect IPTV quality, we, we uh, looked at the, the video stream itself. The code and compression has to do with how much uh, bandwidth we're going to generate and the possible quality affected by it. The IP core network in terms of uh, bandwidth, congestion, uh, the ADSL, the copper loop itself, the modem, impulse noise, you know, lightning hits, that type of thing, fiber, uh, power levels, uh, modem, the rates again, the set-top box itself, the decoding, and then of course the interaction of all these layers. So that's why we have FeeStream IPTV Expert Analyzer. We can turn your PC into a powerful IPTV analyzer. We got a great price, $2,000. We can automatically test all channels with pass-fail results. Complete set-top box simulation so you, the, uh, you can actually uh, analyze the quality of the video without even having a set-top box or a TV hooked up. You can take it right off the DSL modem or the fiber modem. Um, as you can see here, you can see the video and a set of pass-fail indicators. We have a MOS score that tells us what the true quality of experience, if the customer was here and everything was hooked up digitally, we can see what the value of that quality is. We can drill into detail to determine root cause of problems through a rich set of uh, metrics that we'll see. And we can detect degrading conditions that simple TV viewing would fail to detect. So when we started off part one, we mentioned, you know, why can't I just hook up a TV and look at the video? And you can. We have the video right here. But this is not going to show us if we have problems in the transport stream. This is not going to show us if we have PCR jitter building up. We're running out of buffer space. We have uh, drop packets on the IP core network. So we need something that's going to monitor all that, do it quickly, and allow us within just a couple of minutes to be able to tell that the IP TV is good to go. And if not, quickly give us the tools to pin it down to an issue right here from the set-top box uh, out to my uh, DSL or fiber modem or back to the, the central office or the NOC. Thank you.